welcome to our pre-vow for Starfield. While we would have liked to have had a full-on gaming vow ready for the embargo, we've played the game for over 40 hours, but still we haven't finished it. So consider this our full evaluation minus actual scores. Describing Starfield as the Elder Scrolls in space is accurate and appropriate. It's really the next entry in that RPG franchise with a different title and setting. As Starfield begins, it's the far-flung future and you're a lowly hack working in a mining camp trying to grind out a living. Your supervisor unexpectedly puts you on an important detail and you quickly learn why. Instead of digging into a vein of aluminum or nickel, you uncover a powerful artifact that knocks you unconscious. When you come to, you learn that there's someone coming to the mine to pick it up. During the exchange, you learn that people don't normally react that way to artifacts, so the buyer gives you a ship and sends you to New Atlantis to meet with a secret society called Constellation. They know all about it, have already collected a couple other pieces, and task you with scouring the cosmos looking for more. While you're a silent protagonist, you're anything but quiet. Conversation trees are an important part of the storytelling. Like a lot of other RPGs, making the right choice from each list of options basically relies on dumb luck. This next assignment requires a bit more discretion for two reasons. But when it's time to persuade someone to your side, there's a system in place to make those conversations less ambiguous. Each NPC has a set number of points to achieve during your conversation based on weighted responses. The more outlandish the reply, the higher the risk, and the higher the point total. Your stats also play into the persuasion system, resulting in some easily won exchanges. It's an improvement, but it's still predominantly a guessing game. Next time you want to talk business, bring your A-game. Starfield is far more Star Trek than Star Wars. Its characters often come off as dry and, dare we say, a little bit boring. Few of them have anything interesting to share, and even less are doing anything interesting themselves. They leave all that up to you. There are some memorable characters like the soft-spoken cowboy Sam and his daughter who join your crew early on, but there are a lot of boring people in the galaxy. If I'm coming with, that means Cora's on your ship. There are times where you'll get caught off guard by an NPC that remembers things you've done in the past and addresses it in the context of your conversation, but those moments are rare. The system also doesn't really account for humorous or snarky responses, so be sure to play it straight. By far, the biggest misstep with Starfield's story is the lack of a real antagonist. There are space pirates all over the galaxy who will attack your ship or make raiding buildings you come across challenging, but after 40 hours of play, there's still no big bad guy or horrible thing you're trying to stop or shut down. You're an explorer trying to uncover the secrets of outer space, a lackey just trying to find pieces of the artifact to take back to Constellation. Even the members of Constellation have very little going on. I'd spent years searching for religious relics from human history. Starfield is a massive, sprawling game. And while it does have an open galaxy, it's not an open world game per se. There are hundreds of planets to find and explore, but once you land, you're often barricaded into very specific areas. You also cannot fly across the planet's surface. Instead, you must go to a map screen and choose a different landing point. There's also no seamless transition between space and the planets. You choose to land or take off, and then a loading screen appears. Even in the vastness of space, you can fly around a planet's orbit, but venturing anywhere significant requires going to the map screen and fast traveling. Character creation is fairly robust. You can start with dozens of templates or build your character from scratch. So while you're able to fiddle with minutia like chin width and ear height, the biggest problem is the lack of haircuts. Once you've decided on your look, it's time to select who you are. Starfield keeps it pretty simple. Instead of adjusting individual character skills, you choose from ideas or themes. For example, the ballistics option makes you an ace with guns. Once you make those choices, you must then decide what disposition and personality your character has. Most of these choices affect other systems in the game. Primary mission objectives generally amount to obtaining intel about an artifact piece, traveling to its location, 
clearing out any enemies, and then returning it to Constellation. Fetch quests are even more grating in Starfield because returning objects often means traveling from one solar system to the next and navigating the fast travel menus. Even when you stay in the same city, the constant loading screens every time you open a door slow things down. The side missions fare much better, but again, aren't particularly exciting. Oftentimes you'll find yourself doing actual jobs, like working in a pharmaceutical plant, becoming an exec at a shady tech company, or joining a street gang. Meeting a single quest giver often spirals into multiple objectives. Sometimes missions are thrust upon you via distress calls, and there's no way to tell how challenging the mission will be until you accept it. We say again, respond immediately or we will be forced to open fire. Weapons are plentiful, but resist the urge to pick up each one because encumbrance is a big part of Starfield. Carry too much and you move like a sloth, depleting your oxygen and ultimately your health bar. You can't even do things like off-ship fast travel if you're encumbered. We fought it the entire time and we've been forced to dump invaluable gear on the ground just so we can move faster than a crawl. We've never been fans of this mechanic, and Starfield fails to find a new, better approach. Weapons follow the usual tropes of SMG, assault rifle, shotgun, etc. But there are gunpowder and laser variants. You can assign weapons to the D-pad or select them from an inventory list, but you can never tell how much ammo each one has. As you progress, you can upgrade your ship with parts and weapons to make it more effective and recruit people you come across to its crew. You're also regularly joined on your missions by companions, and while they're great company and provide objectives, they're basically worthless in combat. I'll follow you from here on out, Captain. Starfield is not an open world game, and each part of its world is fairly small compared to its contemporaries. Its visuals never take advantage of it. You can see details drawing in when moving quickly, textures are blurry, and it never runs faster than 30 frames per second. Now, for the most part, that's not a big deal, as it does feel responsive most of the time, but there are a couple areas where the frame rate almost bottoms out. Facial animation runs the gamut on a character-by-character -character basis. The source of most of the issues are their mouths, or the fact that they walk through each other like a bunch of ghosts. The good news is that urban areas are heavily populated, resulting in a convincing illusion. Starfield has moments of grandeur, and while the graphics aren't great, they get the job done. The audio makes everything that happens feel important. Even just a ship taking off feels like the most epic moment thanks to the incredible soundtrack and audio stings that accompany the chest compressing sound effects. The sounds of ship rockets as various craft enter or exit the atmosphere are a constant reminder that you're out in the wild blue yonder. Voice acting is generally great. Even the most insignificant NPC has something to say as you rush by. Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. Starfield's audio package is incredible. Starfield is a sci-fi first-person shooter. You don't want to hear that, but that's what it is, and a pretty great one. We're sure the RPG players out there will feel compelled to play it in third person, but we recommend against it. Aiming, moving, and shooting in first person, all vastly superior to the alternative. Guns ramp up as you play. At first they feel meager and lacking impact, but as you uncover more powerful guns, they become more and more enjoyable to use. One of the true joys of Starfield is popping an enemy space helmet with some well-targeted headshots. Glass flies and the sound of the implosion is extremely gratifying. The lack of ammo is almost as annoying as the encumbrance, and it's exacerbated by not being able to check the clip before selecting a gun, but generally, the gunplay does feel great. It's just not as frequent as we'd like. Enemy AI is strong, and almost every firefight, one of them will do something that makes you raise an eyebrow. They'll retreat and run away when they know they're outgunned, juke and drive to avoid being hit, or just run and hide. Traversal depends on how you set up your character. We've built a gunslinger with a jetpack, so getting around just about anywhere in the game is a snap. Without the verticality the jetpack provides, the on-foot traversal is much more cumbersome. Once you're out in space, Starfield finds a great middle ground between depth and accessibility when piloting the ship. 
it's generally just aim with the analog stick and shoot with the shoulder buttons. There's a power system where you must allocate juice to each of the ship's components, but we found a setting that has basically sustained our ship for dozens of hours. The big problem is that there's just not that much happening in space. You have to look for dogfights most of the time, and there are space stations to dock with and invade, but things are just way too quiet when you head off planet. There are some nice touches, like being able to scan each planet, plant, creature, or resource, but then there are caveats, like wildlife. That's way too aggressive. <laughs> Progression is where the rubber meets the road with any RPG, and Starfield tries to make it as painless as possible. Provided you're not encumbered, you can go to the map screen, place your cursor on just about any planet, and immediately fast travel there, even if you're on foot, out in the middle of nowhere. When you start jumping between galaxies, you'll have to connect them with smaller trips before you can quickly travel between them. It's completely unnecessary. As you level up, you earn skill points, but you can't simply go spend them in the five different skill trees. Instead, there are mini quests, like killing a certain number of enemies that you must complete before each module on the skill tree unlocks. It makes you commit to one of the five skill trees out in the field before you can make any headway. Oddly enough, Walking hundreds of miles while encumbered does not unlock the ability to carry more weight. Leveling up is extremely slow. We're talking hours between each level. There have been multiple times where we've fought to the end of a dungeon only to find that the final area is too difficult, but there's no real way to go someplace else, level grind, and come back. It just takes too long. Instead, you're forced to find other objectives to accomplish and come back hours later. Probably, the most surprising thing in Starfield is the amount of loading time. You can't play it for more than five minutes without some kind of load. Go through a door, it's a load. Leave the planet, it's a load. Run more than 100 feet in any of the cities, it's a load. It makes the game feel ancient at times. Starfield's no pushover though. You will undoubtedly die. And when you do, you're sometimes placed miles away from where you were. So we recommend saving often to avoid having to replay large battles or retread long distances. As the next in line of Bethesda's pantheon of top shelf RPG franchises, Starfield mostly delivers. Bereft of consistent set piece moments, it's a more subtle game where the player must take joy in smaller things like discovery or using that new weapon you just installed on your ship for the first time. The vastness of space has brought many an intellectual to his or her knees and pondering people will enjoy Starfield the most. It's not overt and its slow burn will take you to interesting places filled with not as interesting people. Its individual components do not compare well to games like No Man's Sky or Cyberpunk 2077, but it's more about the sum of its parts. Many will be surprised to hear that we only experienced one minor bug the entire time, but we're more surprised at the amount of restraint used in crafting this galaxy-sized RPG. 